Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Leila, a recovering architect and a BIM and Revit specialist working at Autodesk. In my today's video, I want to tackle a very special topic I've been avoiding for a while and no, it's not stairs, it's coordinates. <laughs> so why is this whole topic so complicated? I think the fact that there are many different ways to set up the Revit project and then many different ways to export um, a geolocated Revit files uh, to FC combined with a lot of misunderstandings how the coordinates should behave in Revit and then in IFC um, creates a mess which we will try to clean up now. So let's start with the basics. When you start a new Revit project, you can switch on the three Revit origins in the visibility graphics dialog under site. Here we can find the internal, the project base point and the survey point. In a new project, these will typically be on top of each other, but you can move the project base and the survey point depending on the project requirements. The one point you cannot move is the Revit internal. And this point uh, was also invisible before Revit 2020, which created a lot of confusion because it really defines the magic area where all the geometry needs to sit in, and that's the 10 miles or 16 kilometers circle. You can't move it, so please keep it in mind. It often happens that if you load CAD files, which have geometry outside of this area, you will notice some weird behavior like lines jumping around the screen and snapping, which seems to be a bit off, and... Danger, Will Robinson. This is the alarm sign when you need to stop and clean up your file before you do anything else. So let's set up a small project file and uh, see how we can geolocate our Revit file correctly. I'll first link a DWG with my site to set the context. I use the center to center placing and then move the DWG to where I want to have it. Ideally, you will align it so that the project base point already sits where you need it to be, but you can also move the points later on. You can also now rotate the project north uh, or also do it later. Uh, once finished, I would always recommend to pin the DWG and then acquire the coordinates from it. This is my favorite way of geolocating Revit projects because if your DWG is geolocated correctly, it will also pull the information about the GIS coordinate system, like the name and the EPSG code, which can later then be exported to FC, for example. Once you have acquired the coordinates, you can still adjust your project base point and move it to where you need it. This is typically a building corner, a grid intersection or something like that. One thing you should not do is moving the DWG or the clipped survey point anymore because this will change your shared coordinate system and this is probably not what you want to do. It is actually like moving the earth under your building and um, you'll need to unclip the survey point and then you can relocate it to where you need it and this is typically somewhere on your site. Notice that the project base point and the survey point are now reporting the shared coordinates or the GIS coordinates, which means they know where, where they sit on Earth. Obviously, the origin of the GIS system is very far away. In the case of the UTM 32N we typically use in Germany, it's somewhere around this area. So I remind you of this when we talk about the IFC export options later on. Of course, if you don't have a geolocated DWG, there are other options to set up your shared coordinate systems. And I would like to mention two of the most used ones. The first one is uh, specifying the coordinates on a point. And depending on whether your survey point is clipped or not, it will either move if clipped or remain where it is. And it actually makes no difference for the coordinate system just for your Revit representation of the survey point. If you work with GIS coordinates, I think it really makes no sense to clip it and let it be moved to the origin of the GIS system because Revit knows where the origin of the shared system is and your survey point is meant to be somewhere on your site. Another way I often see in projects is entering the coordinates directly into the project base point. 
And this will basically give the project base point the information where it lives uh, on Earth and your survey point will remain on the origin of um, the coordinate system, but could again be unclipped and moved to where you need it, for example, again, somewhere on your site. Now, there is a lot more to be said about shared coordinates in Revit, as they are not only used for the GIS coordinate systems, but also between files uh, to coordinate the local coordinate systems on big Revit projects. Um, I won't go into the details here, but I will link you a couple of great AU sessions below in the video description, which you can watch if you want to dig a little bit deeper into this topic. Now, there is also a tool called Shared Reference Point um, for another way of coordinate exchange between Civil 3D and Revit, which I personally don't prefer. I think you might like it if you're more on the Civil side uh, than on the Revit side. And I also link the exact instructions on how to use it below if you want to check it out. But basically, it will deliver the same results as the other methods. Now, um, let's go back to the project we set up before and create some geometry, which we can export to FC. We just create four walls and I also add markers to our origins so that we can analyze the exported FCs a bit better. Now, let's head over to the FC export options and see which results they'll deliver us. Let's first start with internal. Selecting internal means that all the geometry in your IFC will be referenced to the location of this origin. So in our case, when we insert this IFC in another software, this will be the base point which needs to be known by the recipient. Notice that despite using the Revit origin, we can see the reference to the GIS system and the exact coordinates of the Revit internal in GIS. This works only in IFC 4 and is not possible in IFC Twix 3. So I would really recommend you, if you are working with GIS coordinates, go for IFC 4. I repeat the same for all the other options. As you can see here, the GIS coordinates will always change to reflect the location of the origin selected in the world. One thing to be noted when you export with the shared coordinate setting, however, is that the GIS coordinate shown here will be set to zero which means that you are exporting the project reference to the origin of the geo-coordinates, which I may remind you is quite far away, uh, somewhere around South Africa. And this is also why you will get a warning from Revit. And this FC might indeed cause issues depending on where you are using it. And we'll see that a little bit later when we test and compare the exported files. Now I'll switch to the OpenFC viewer and start linking our files to see the difference. As an additional reference, I have created a small marker using a new Revit project with no coordinate set to make sure that this marks um, the origin of the IC viewer uh, itself because uh, it's usually not visible and I just want to see it for the testing purposes. Now let's go ahead and load the exported IFCs one by one. As you can see, the Revit internal will be mapped to the origin of the IFC viewer, which makes sense because the IFC has been exported reference to the Revit internal. If we load uh, the internal with True North, uh, we'll basically get the same result as in Revit when switching between uh, the Project North and the True North. It makes sense, right? If we now load uh, the IFC exported with the project base point, uh, this point will again be mapped to the origin of our IFC viewer and again rotated to True North will consider this rotation. The IFC file exported with the survey point as reference will again map the survey point to the origin of the IFC viewer. So actually it's pretty straightforward. Now let's see what happens with the IFC exported using shared coordinates. At first, I'm not really able to see it. And if I isolate it and zoom to it, you can see that the geometry is very distorted, simply due to the enormous distance to the origin. We have very small geometry, which sits somewhere in Germany, and the origin it's referring to is somewhere on the African coast. So now let me clarify one thing. If I only open this one file, 
most of the IFC viewers will actually move their own origin to this point to avoid the geometry distortion and display everything seemingly correctly. This will work fine as long as you load only georeference files and avoid having any geometry hundreds of kilometers away. So you can see this is not really just a rabbit issue. This is happening in almost every software simply due to the rounding that happens with these high numbers. Now, what do we learn from this? In building projects, it only makes sense to have a local coordinate system and a local base point that you refer your walls, doors, and so on to. Your door doesn't need to be geolocated. What you want to geolocate is the project so that it knows where it sits on the world. And this happens using the shared coordinates in Revit. When exporting to FC, you should stick to FC4 as mentioned select a local base point, so it means Revit internal, project base point or survey point, um, and the georeference will be exported automatically in the background. Would you like us to dig a little bit deeper into where this geolocation is actually stored in the FC file and how you can see it? If yes, please leave me a comment and otherwise, thanks for watching, leave a like, subscribe and see you in the next video.